Hey, what's up guys? Jake with Legacy 4x4 here again. And today we're going to be working on a different project, something I've been really looking forward to, to making that's unrelated to my Jeep. What we're going to be making today is like a budget 4x4 CNC plasma table. So this plasma table is going to be 4 feet by 6 inches by 4 feet by 6 inches. That way I can get a full 4x4 sheet onto the table of this, or onto the top of this plasma table. Using a Power Plasma 60S from Everlast with the machine torch, which I've got sitting over there, and I'll show you guys in a little bit. That's going to be what I use as the power source. And then I'm using a Hobby CNC control board, and then a simple Linux CNC and Mach 3 uh, control system that should hopefully make this work really nicely. So we're going to be using some 2x6 box tubing. This is 1 8 inch thick, it's the thinnest I could get it in. I'll be using a lot of 2x2, two two. so 2x2 two two is going to make up the majority of the frame rails the rails that the slider is going to ride on, um, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to use the same thing for the legs. All the support brackets is all 2x2. Two two. So I've got all of these 2x6s two are cut to 4 feet and 6 inches each. I've got four 2x2s two cut to 38 inches. Those are going to be the legs. I've got nine 2x2s two two cut to be uh, 4 feet 6 inches as well. Those are going to be all of the support pieces. And I've got three 2x2s two two cut to be 4 feet and 10 inches. Those are going to be the rails that the the plasma cutter itself is, or the uh, the torch is going to ride on to give it my X and Y axis. I also had these are the parts that I had to have actually made. Um, I could have made these, uh, you know, with enough time I could have created this, but I chose not to. It would have taken too long. They've got a, a CNC plasma cutter, obviously there, like a it's like an eight foot by twelve foot one. It's huge. And so what we did, these are four and a half feet long total. These little slats are all 3 sixteenths of an inch wide. They go down for two inches, and then the last inch of this has a break in it so that it's gonna sit flat on top of a piece of four foot six inch squared 16 gauge that I had cut out too. So these are gonna be my slat holders, and then I've got slats that are all one eighth of an inch thick um, over there sitting on the Jeep. That's gonna, what's gonna rest in this, and that's what my work piece is gonna rest on top of. The reason this is 3 sixteenths and not one eighth like the slats is to give it a little bit of room so that I can bend the slats in. So two of these are exactly the same and one of them is offset so that the slats can have a little bit of arch in it. So, all right, so that's what we got guys. Now let's get going on building this frame. Alright guys, so I got these two side pieces done. You can see the top piece is made out of this 2x6 and then the rest of it is made out of 2x2. Two two. So the 2x2 two two is obviously the legs and then this 2x2 two two down here is going to be where I'm going to put like the plasma cutter and some storage for some other stuff. The 2x6 two is used, I'm going to put a two, three 2x2s two down on the bottom of this, place down a piece of 16 gauge sheet and that's going to be the floor of my water pan. And then on top of that 16 gauge sheet is where the slat holders are going to go and then the slats. That's going to give me about a four inch tall water table. And then, so now I'm going to put these on their sides, put down the other piece, and start to do the back and the front of the table. So let's get to that next. Alright, so at this point, I've got everything tacked and generally where it's supposed to be. I've test fit one of the slats, it fit, I've got everything exactly how I want it. So now I'm going to go through, I've got to do all the final welding. This is going to take a little while. I'm just going to go through and just hit everything that I've not hit yet, do a full beat on it. Um, everything is going to get fully welded with the exception of the 16 gauge sheet that's the bottom of the water pan and the slat holders. Those are just going to get tacked into place. I want those to be able to be replaced in the event that they get rusted. 
torn up, you know, covered with slag or something like that, so I want those to be replaceable, so they're just going to get tacked in with, like, little one-inch tacks. But let's go ahead and get into some welding, guys. Uh, I'll catch back up with you in a minute. After I get everything welded the top, back on its feet. As you can see, flipped it back down again. You can see the slat holders in there. Turned out really good. And you can see the way that they make the slats have just a right. slight... So the slats are now in place. That's what they look like. Pretty happy with that. I do need to to trim a little bit off of some of them. Some of them are a little too long, so they were, I had to hit them in there and get them in there, but you mean they fit, so whatever. Next I'm gonna build, I gotta go from this pole to that pole. It's gonna be two four foot 10 pieces on each end, and those are gonna be the things, or the two by twos that the gantry actually slides on. I'm using a linear rail system. So I'm gonna weld those into place, and we're gonna keep going, guys. So I did the linear rails, forgot to take any video of it, but you'll see what they look like here at the end. Next step is to make some plates for the casters. I'll go ahead and show you what those look like. All right, so I've got all four of these made. You can see how those work. It's literally just a steel plate, a 1 8 inch steel plate on top of the caster plate that came with it. I just put, these are 1 quarter inch, I think by half inch bolts with a nut on the bottom of them. Easy enough, allows the caster to fully spin and rotate without hitting on anything. And now this plate is what's gonna get actually welded to the table. So now if I ever have to replace these casters or if I upgrade them or something like that, They'll just bolt right into these two holes here. So All right, now that I got the table built the way that I wanted to, now it's time to get in some paint. I'm just going to use some regular Krylon matte black paint, nothing fancy. The whole table frame is going to be matte black, and then there's going to be some red accent pieces on it uh, to kind of make it pop a little bit. Black red goes with the garage, so that's what we're going to do. So let's get into that, guys, and then we'll finish this up. All right, so these are pretty simple. I bought these off of a seller on eBay. They're like 150 bucks powder coated shipped, which is not bad for what they are. They came with the bracket itself, which is this. All of the necessary hardware, some nuts that he uses as spacers, and some cap nuts, and the bearings that it uses. So overall, pretty good package for the money, uh, especially because heat plasma cut these. They're perfect fits. They work great on this thing. The idea of how this works is you use one of these bolts and these silver nuts to make the spacer for how far apart all the bearings are. So I know because I just did one of these that I'm going to use two nuts on each one and then place the bearing in the captive nut and that's how it's going to get spaced out. Alright, so I've got all the nuts tightened. Now I'm just these bearings just slide over top of those bolts, nothing fancy about them. They're a sealed bearing so they should not require any maintenance. They go on just like that, followed by the two black nuts that I'm using as captives. Alright, so that's two of them. You can see how those work. Nice, easy, smooth rolling bearing. Now, there's two more that go down here, one here, and one here. These last two that have the, the big area here, these are adjustable, obviously. You can slide them up and down, and you make it tight on top of whatever tube you're using. So it's nice touch that it's adjustable. Um, I wish that they were probably in a different spot, but it makes sense where they're at, so I'm not going to complain too, too much. Like I said, these are great. The power coat's a really good finish on these. Um, really nice touch. Like I said, he does all of that. It came completely welded, ready to work, ready to use, which is awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and put in these last couple nuts. All right, so here's the, the slider the in. You can see how that works. It's pretty smooth. I need to just um, like wipe off the rail here. The bearing is a little tight, but it's a little, it's really smooth actually for what it is. Super simple to set up. Took me about 10 minutes to set one of these up. Um, super easy. And then that was so it. I got the two so sliders for the x-axis in place right now. The sliders came with two holes already pre-cut into the top of these, and using those holes is how I'm going to mount my y-axis. So, I really quickly, with some one inch steel plate I had, I had some scrap of, I made these little one inch by four inch cutouts with two holes drilled exactly in line with these two holes on the slider. My idea here is I've got my y-axis pole, or my two by two for y-axis. I'm gonna weld these little coupons here to the end of this, and then I'm gonna bolt the drill for that. I'm gonna weld these little brackets here to the end of this tube, kind of like so, and that's how I'm going to bolt this tube onto the top of so you guys the can see how that worked out nice and easy. Just a simple piece of steel up at the front of each end. 
All right, you guys can see how that worked out. Nice and easy. It's just a piece of steel with some holes into it at each end. I'm going to put the gear rack up here now, and I'm going to paint this, and then I'm going to install it on the plasma cutter. So let's get All right, so I went in and just did two taps uh, into this plate here. This is 3 sixteenths of an inch thick, and I'm going to use 3 eighths inch, 3 eighths inch bolts to mount the, uh, the Y axis to. So it's going to tap right into those. Nice and smooth, no nuts or anything else to worry about. So I got that done. Now just to put the Y axis on here, and then we can keep on going. All right, so let's move on to the next step of this frame build. Now it's time to make the arm for the computer monitor, the keyboard, and the mouse to rest on. So it's a pretty simple project. It's going to be a plate that's going to be mounted to the edge of the table with an arm extending from it with a flat surface for the keyboard and the mouse, and then a raised portion that I'm going to use in order to mount the monitor on. So let's get to that next, guys. You can see the water table there, the water pan. That's just a piece of 16 gauge down at the bottom. Those are the slat holders that I had made at the, my metal supply store. The slats all cut to the actual, the proper length. I trimmed them all down to the right size. So you can see the slats there. The two by six makes up the whole outside of the water pan. And then two by twos make up the legs. I used the remainder part of that uh, 16 gauge sheet down there at the bottom to make a shelf. I'm going to use that to store, as you can tell, the computer, the plasma cutter, and then random extra scrap metal and some other stuff to kind of get it off the floor of the garage. Alright, so here you can see the linear rail system. You can see what that looks like without the motors on it. So this is just a piece of 2x2, two two, nothing hardcore about this at all, with this special rack from McMaster Car mounted to the side of it. That rack mates up with these gears perfectly and these gears go on the end of the motors. Pretty simple, so you can see that it'll just slide back and forth nice and easy, just like that. All right, so that's the x-axis, there's one with the two motors on it, and then we've got the y-axis right here. It slides like so, as you can see. This is my, I just built this, I'm just test fitting this right now, this is my z-axis. It's got a built-in motor and a, a linear rail screw, or linear screw, and that's how it makes up and down movement. Uh, I'll probably upgrade this later. This is kind of a cheap version of it. If it works, great. If not, I'll upgrade it later. There's that. There's the computer mount that we made, as you can see there. It bolts on with these four bolts right there. Just bolts right into the side of the table there. And you can see it's got a little tray for the keyboard and for the mouse, and then the screen is resting on the back there, kind of like so. Nice and easy. There's that overview of that. All right, so this table has a four foot six inch by four foot six inch working area. That'll allow me to put a full four foot by four foot sheet on it with a little bit of room left over on the edges, which is perfect because it's exactly what I wanted. The overall table is four foot 10 inches by four foot 10 inches on the outside. Pretty simple build for the physical stuff. I'm sure the electronics are going to get a lot more complicated, but that's going to be in the next video. So make sure to stay tuned for that next video on this, guys. We'll get the electronics up and running, and we'll do some test cuts with it. If you like videos like this, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and leave some comments down below so we know what we're doing well or what you could think we could improve on. Hey, make sure to check out the Legacy 4x4 Instagram page when you get a chance. That page gets updated a lot more regularly. And remember to take care. Thanks for watching.